Welcome to my solution to the Code Wars Kata Cigarette Ride of Fortune. I'll start by reading the problem for you. You and a group of explorers have found a legendary ziggurat hidden in an obscure jungle. According to legend, the ancient structure houses portals to other worlds. The outer west wall of the ziggurat contains a series of entrance doors. When an explorer enters through a door, they sit in a mobile cart that moves in a straight path until it reaches a switch or hits a wall. A switch reroutes the cart either left or right depending on the state of the switch and the cart's movement direction. Interdimensional porters line the entire north, east, south walls inside the ziggurat. If a cart hits one of these walls, the occupying explorer exits through the portal before them. If a cart ends at the west wall, the explorer exits through a door and returns back outside. The expedition leader has assigned you the task of keeping track of the exit points of each explorer. You are given an artifact that provides you with a map of the ziggurat's inner chambers. Switch Mechanics Above is a representation of a switch. It exists in one of two states, A or B. If switch is in state A and a cart moves and a cart enters by moving west, they are routed north, east they are routed south, south they are routed east, north they are routed west. If a switch were in state B, the cart would be routed in the orthogonal direction opposite to that for the A state. Immediately after a cart passes through a switch, the switch changes state by rotating 90 degrees. Cart pathing. Above left is an example ziggurat with four switches in their initial states. The S in the green arrow represents the initial position of the explorer who enters the structure through door 1. The switches at 1 1, 1 4, and 4 1 begin in state A, while the switch at 4 4 begins in state B. And by the way, this rotate 90 degrees effectively changes them from state A to state B, or from state B back to state A. Just a looking forward comment there. The left image shows the path followed by the cart in sequence denoted by the white dashed arrows labeled one, labeled 1, 2, and 3. First it travels through the switch at 1, 1, then at 4, 1, then at 4, 4. The right image shows the remainder of the cart's path up to the explorer's exit marked by the red arrow. So it exits at y is 4 and x is 0. I'll read, that. I'll read that bullet point again. The right image shows the remainder of the cart's path up to the explorer's exit marked by the red arrow. By step 4, after exiting the switch at 1-4, the state of all four switches has changed as shown above. The, the end state for the switch at 1-4 is B, while the rest are in state A. Um, I'm going to check something here. 4, 1, so the Y position is listed before the X position. Okay. The end state for the switch at 1B is B, while the rest of the state A had read that. If the next explorer in sequence were also to enter through door 1, they would exit through the portal at 5, 4. Input. Your function will receive two arguments, an end by end matrix representing the layout of the ziggurat interior, an array slash list of doors, that, are, that is rows, entered by each explorer in sequence. Assume each following explorer enters immediately after the preceding explorer has exited. Your function should return an array of the exit points of the explorers who exited through the portals and none slash null for those who return back outside. Here's a test example. We've got switches A, 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 and B, and explorers 1, 1, 0, 3, and so on. And for the output, we're expected this guy leaves back through the west entrance, and this one goes to portal at 5, 4, and then at 0, 5, and so on. Technical constraints. Ziggurat size n range 40 greater than or equal to n greater than or equal to 6. Turns out 40 is pretty large. Test, final test suite, 15 fixed tests, 100 random tests. Uh, JavaScript, I don't care because I'm using Python. Inputs will always be valid, and if you enjoy 
this kata, please be sure to check out this person's other katas, but right now we're focused on this one. So let's train. Now the way I'm going to do this is I'm looking at my second screen where I have the solution I've already written, and I'm but I'm going to write in here and explain what I'm doing. I won't go too, to, too much into depth of why I'm doing it, and you can ask questions and maybe I'll make more detailed explainer videos to pick out little parts of it. But for now, let's let's just jump into it. Um, let's see, where do I want to start this? For starters, I, I chose to parse the explorer at, into a NumPy array. So, artifact object is artifact class constructor of artifact and now I'm going to scroll down in my solution to where I defined class artifact and start writing that for you I'm going to try to refactor on the fly because I don't totally love some ways that I, some ways that I did it in there I'm going to let self. I'm going to create a numpy, initiate a numpy array. Uh, no, I'm going to establish what is the height as being the length of the artifact. And I'm going to establish the width as being length of the artifacts sublist. Okay, so then I can initiate a numpy array, numpy.zeros of the tuple height, comma, width. And the next step is to populate that with, I'm going to use 1 to represent state A and minus 1 to represent state B. It ends up being convenient that way. For I row in enumerate artifacts for j comma character in enum I don't, I don't need a parenthesis there enumerate artifact i bracket i if character equals a then at the numpy array at i and j equal one else if Elif is important. I made some mistakes where I wrote if instead of elif other another point in my solution, and that helped me up for a while. Anyway, if char equal b and i j equal minus one. You know, I kind of feel like switching around j and i here. Eh, not worth it. Self dot I call that self an artifact equal n. So now this artifact object stores height. I'm gonna call it just art for short. No, I'll, I'll keep it as artifact object. That's easier to follow. And let's stop and test this here. What is the problem here? Indentation on indent does not level, does not match. Important up by Duff. Duff write a fortune class artifact. Do I need, do I need parenthesis here? Python 3.8. This is vexing.
On indent does not match outer indentation level. On line. What about print foo? Inconsistent use of tabs and spaces in indentation. I thought this was set to be four spaces when I press tab. Return invalid syntax. Okay, I deleted that. I forgot to put self.height and self.width over here. There we go. 1110. One, That's I don't know what was happening with the with the index problems, but now we got it. Okay. You know what? I'm going to do if um, verbose equal false. So I'll say if verbose print that. Right, it's not printing that. Okay. So that's that takes care of the artifact. Now we need to think about an explorer. So I'll start by creating an explorer class. to initialize that I can do that with self and um, x y dx dy that's those are the initial conditions that I want to be able to set for my explorer now self dot x equal x self dot y equal y self dot dx equal uh, you know what, I want to write y first, because rows get accessed before columns in the NumPy array. Self.dx equal, self.dy equal, equal dy, self.dx, dx. Dy there. It also it also needs to store self dot result none self dot exited was false and if verbose I want to print out that there's a new explorer at y and then self dot y x comma self dot x moving dy moving at dy is self dot dy and then dx comma self dot dx So now I have my initializing the explorer, and yeah, I can return none. The next thing to do is for explorer start x in explorers exp. I'll call it explorer object to be more. Explicit explorer object equals explorer of y equal. Oh wait, um, it's the explorer start row y equal explorer start row x equal minus one. I'll get into why that shows minus one for that.
dy equals 0, dx equal 1. And now that we have this explorer object, while not explorer.exited, so while the explorer has not yet exited, um, I'm kind of going to refactor on the fly a little bit here. Yeah. Explorer.step. So it takes a step and then explorer.evaluate and rotate. Yeah, that's that, that that's how I'm going to break it up. So Let's test and debug the, f the, I'm going to comment out this evaluate and rotate step, so and rotate the function. So now we just want to look at explorer.step. Self, I don't need to care about the artifact because it's, it's just a simple such and such places, then how did I write the logic for stepping? Oh right, it's nice and simple. Self dot x, I'm going to write y first, plus equals d self dot dy, and self dot x plus equal self dot dx. Okay, and then another if for both. Just step to y is that, okay. Uh, I should be able to test the step now. Let's set verbose is true. Name exp has not been defined. That's probably because I did explorer. Ah, I need explorer object instead of exp. Let's try that. Test that. Play with the formatting here. Okay, it just walks forever. And I'm kind of curious how this ends. Max buffer size reached. Okay, fair enough. So after the explorer steps, the explorer needs to evaluate and rotate. also need to include an artifact object. It'll become clear why I need that. Evaluate and rotate artifact object and self. Right, yeah. Explore object dot yeah the self is there. Print if if we're print evaluating um,
Okay, this self dot x less than zero, and now I can talk about this initial condition. I started with x is minus one and dx is one, but I had it step one, so it's like they're outside, and they step inside before they evaluate. So it won't. So this on this first one, it won't count it as being out at the very start, because otherwise they would just short circuit and not do anything. Okay, if self dot x less than zero. That means it exited off to the west. Self dot exited equal true. Self dot result equal none. Notice that notice something interesting here. I, w I wish I could use um, self if self dot result was none, then I could just say if not result then continue the, re well, not result, but because the problem output wants it to be, I guess I could recode it. You know what? No, we're gonna keep it this same way. Elif, this elif is crucial, by the way. Or maybe it was somewhere else. Anyway, it's elif is important here also. Self.x equals artifact object dot width then self equal true and self dot result equal and in this case it's self dot y comma self dot x minus one and the reason what's the reason for the minus one it's because of zero indexing making up for that this next it's at this locations L if self dot y equal artifact object dot height self dot exited equal true self dot Alt equals self dot y minus one. Same reason for the minus one here, it's zero indexing. And self dot x. L if self dot y less than zero. Self dot result equal zero for the y and self dot x for the x. all of those things. Then after all of that, we can say if self.exited return, but if verbose such and such and then return but if we don't return then we have to consider whether to rotate so if artifact object dot artifact at self dot y comp oops, bracket bracket self dot x bracket not equal zero if verbose actually hold on let's um let's not worry about that yet let's check here print evaluate what did I print evaluating colon that's incorrect Yeah, oops, I can't evaluate and rotate because I haven't written that yet. Wait, is it? Explore object has no attribute evaluate and rotate.
Yes, it does. Class Explorer. Attribute error. Explorer object has no attribute. Evaluate and rotate. Def define. Oh, it's within. It's wrapped within another definition. That's the problem. Okay. So it it's evaluating. It's walking along. Um, I want to. Put a marker there so I can see things more easily. There we go. Exited at Y6, moving. Okay. Um, and I'm going to print out this self.result. Oops. That's not where I want that to be. I want that to only be if self.exited. All right, like result 1.5. That looks the way I want it to look. Now we have to decide whether to rotate or not. We've already done part of the evaluate step. If verbose, then I'm going to say, uh, hold on. Oops. Need to back this up to here, so it's in line with those. If for both, about to rotate at To rotate. Okay, so it, it triggered that it was supposed to rotate. And it triggered it was supposed to rotate here. That's good. Now, how, how did I do that? Okay, uh, for the verbose, I also printed. I wanted to be able to check that it switched things around the way it needed to. Self dot rotate as a function of artifact, right? Yeah, artifact object. And let's print the artifact. Object dot artifact again, and let's print did rotate. So now we have to actually implement. So let's pull the switch state. Artifact object dot artifact at self dot y and self dot x. Let's explore if switch state equals one self dot apply state one rules else lf switch state equal minus one self dot apply state minus
minus one rules. And once we've done that, then artifact object dot artifact at self dot y self dot x equals negative. Actually, how about just times equal minus one? Now, of course, I need the apply rules things. Okay, let's just see if anything's not broken. Unexpected indent, line 67. Ah, I need to get for both here. Row rate. There's the problem. these guys. About to rotate, did rotate, but it's going to keep walking along the x direction. Alright, this is okay. This is good. Now I just need to implement the logic for applying the state one rules. So, it's going to go like if foo bar. Foo bar, it'll be the same way for down there. And this is if south. According to the instructions, then it has to go. Then it has to go east. So if self dot dy equal one, you know what? I am going to do the write this the way I wrote it before. Dy equals self dot dy and dx equals self dot dx, and then at the bottom I'll go and bring it back to self dot dy equal dy and self dot dx equal dx. It'll just, I don't have to type self a bunch of times now. If dy equal 1 and dx equal 0, we were going south. The rules say now we need to go, not easy, we need to be going east. Then dy comma dx equal 0 comma 1, that's east. And then I will copy that for that pattern down to here. Except that if it was east, then it needs to be south. East is 0 and 1. South is 1 and 0. By the way, um, from the instructions, notice that the y goes 0, 1, 2, it goes down. So south is increasing values of y. Okay, what, what do I need next? I need north and west and west and north. So north is dy is minus 1. West is dx is minus 1. West is dx is minus 1. And north is dy is minus 1. And x is 0. OK, that's that one. Now I'm going to do something similar here. I have to make this be 
a function of self. Okay, this time south needs to become west, and west needs to become south, north needs to become east, east needs to become south. So south we've already got, west is x is minus 1, west is x is minus 1, and south we already got, north we already got, east x is positive 1, east x is positive 1, north is minus 1. Okay, is it possible that, we, that we're done here? About to rotate, did rotate, moving at 1, 0, stepping down, switch it, changes this switch to there. This is looking good. Okay, now uh, we just need to collect the results. Well, not export on such and such, then once that, once we've broken out of that and the Explorer is done. Results equal uh, results dot append explorer object dot result. Return results. Verbose equals false because I think I got it. Oops. Why is it exiting at 5, 1? I guess I gotta go back to verbose is true. So it rotates. Where does it exit? You know what? I, I do want this here. I just only want it if it's verbose. Oops. Result zero one. One. Result five one. That's incorrect. About to rotate four one. About to rotate four one. Did rotate. Okay, we, this is not right. Now, which set of rules are wrong here? One zero zero one zero one one zero minus one zero zero minus one zero minus one minus one zero. If verbose print state. Do the same thing on state two rules. If verbose print state plus one rules. Well, the problem with state one rules. Oh, I made the same mistake again. Ha ha ha. This needs to be elif. Because otherwise it's gonna change things twice. Can't believe I made that mistake again. That should be better. Hey, they all passed. Okay, let's turn off verbose. And there we have it. Let's attempt. And it takes a minute. No, it doesn't take a minute, but it takes some time. 
And the reason it takes some time is these god tier ziggurats. Um, oh, they're all. They don't show me what they. They don't show you what they look like when they've passed. Well, let's make it fail. Just um, results plus. just so we can see what they look like when it's wrong. Oh, well. Well, you can see that the answers are pretty long. Let's, um, let's bring this out of the if for both. So we can see what the ziggurats actually look like. Oops. Attempt. Oh, it's <laughs> it doesn't even show me. That's funny. <laughs> anyway, the point is. The point is it's. The point is they're pretty big. And I think I can stop trying to impress you now. Robos is false. Failed because I added foo here. I, I, um, sure, submit. And there you have it. Thanks for watching.